Hi, River of Life, and everybody tuning in, I'm so glad that you could make it to be with us today. It is the 21st of November, and we are heading fast to the end of the year. I know that it will feel frenetic and in some ways massively pressurized with so many different forces and demands crashing in. And I was just remembering, preparing for this meeting today, how Jesus at the end of the most famous high-impact sermon that has ever been given, known as the Sermon on the Mount, recorded in Matthew's Gospel, chapters 5, 6, and 7, finishes by saying, He who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like one who builds his house on the rock. The storms rise, the waves crash, but his house remains stable. And it is so encouraging from Jesus, those two realities, that we will all face challenges, hardships, difficulties, pressures, storms. It's not unique to us. It's not because God's forgotten us. It's because, hello, we live in a fallen world. It's all real. The devil is real, and hell is real, and God is real, and heaven is real, and the cross is real, and it is at the center of the universe and the center of our lives. And the second encouragement, that in the midst of that chaos, the best way for us to build in a way that will last forever is to hear his words and put them into practice. It sounds so simple, but actually you being here today to hear God's word and by the power of his spirit to put them into practice in your life is really what life is all about. Father, thank you so much that you have not left us clueless, but you have in love spoken to us by your written word and by your lived word, the word of God made flesh among us, Jesus, God the Son. Thank you that you have revealed how to live. You've given us a light in the darkness. You've made it clear. You've raised up a pathway through the valley. Lord, I pray that as we gather today, as we worship, as we go through the notices, as we head into this next preach, that we would be people who hear your words and put them into practice. For your glory, in Jesus' name, amen. As we come out of worship today, I really want to thank God for our worship leaders and worship bands and for the multimedia skills behind them. I have watched the videos in the last couple of weeks and thought, is this us or is it some third party? I have been amazed at the quality of the graphics, quality of the media, as well as the vocal and instrumentalists. I am so grateful, worship teams, worship bands, worship leaders. We thank you and we praise God for you. Well, we have got three key announcements before we get into the message. Kids dates, and finances. First up, kids. Hi church, we are having such fun on our Zoom calls every Sunday morning. This week I learned some jokes, they were hysterical, kids are just such fun and they love to share funny things. Um, our lesson was on tarantulas, scary, hairy looking creatures. But we're looking at, it's not about the outside, it's about the inside. God wants us to have hearts that are soft and ready for him to use and not be bothering about how we look on the outside. And then coming up, I'm so excited, we've only got two weeks left of the PETS curriculum and we're really ending on a high. There is a character coming that I know you are all going to love to finish it off. So yeah, I hope your kids can stay tuned for Roll Kids. All right, God bless. It is so good to be part of a church that loves to worship Jesus from understanding his word and loves to see that lived out in children as a massive priority. 
And that leads us into dates for the next few weeks coming up. And it's a pretty exciting schedule. Today is the 21st of November. There's Roll to Home, which is where you are now. And then there's Worship This Evening. And the Worship This Evening is called Hymns, Ancient to Modern. And if you haven't yet signed up for that and uh, haven't yet got your plan together to get to uh, Eastley, please make that happen if you possibly can. It's going to be a very, very good evening of singing hymns together. And then next week, the 28th, there will be Roll to Home, but there won't be Worship Evening. And the week after that is the other way around. The 5th of December, there won't be Roll to Home, but there will be in-person final worship evening of the year and it's called celebrate bethlehem celebrate jesus it's our carols concert on the 5th of december 6 p.m come with candles come with your cell phone ready to wave we are going to worship jesus we're going to have the story of the nativity woven through it and we're hoping for hundreds to come out that night and to have a really great outdoor venue big platform big sound carols river of life carol services uh, celebrate bethlehem celebrate jesus so that's the next two sundays the 28th there will be roll to home but there won't be a worship evening on the fifth there won't be roll to home there will be a worship evening and everyone is encouraged to get there and then there'll be three following the 5th of December, which is our Christmas series. That's the 12th, the 19th, and the 25th. And it's called Messiah Foretold, Messiah Found. The 12th and the 19th will be Messiah Foretold, Andrew Ellis and Mus Maramuidze. And then on the 25th, Christmas morning, Messiah Found, which I'm going to preach. And uh, that'll all be delivered on Roll to Home. And similarly, Roll to Home, the last ones ever, the 2nd of January and the 9th of January will be a new year, reading your Bible effectively and praying effectively, the 2nd and the 9th, the 2022 series. And that leads us into the first full in-person, multi-site, multi-meeting, River of Life is back 16th of January. And the 16th of January, there will be no roll to home. Everyone to come in venue. Those times will be advertised, but it'll be pretty much what we had before. Morning at GP, morning at Eastley, afternoon, evening, and those times will come out. And that 16th of January is going to be celebrate children, celebrate Jesus. Uh, we will have done celebrate Africa, celebrate Jesus, celebrate Bethlehem, celebrate Jesus, and then we'll have Celebrate Children, Celebrate Jesus. The 16th of January, we're going to speak about the place of children in our church, the place of the next generation as Africa goes towards 50% under the age of 19 years old. And that leads us into Vision Sunday, 23rd of January, 2022. Don't miss it. And uh, that'll be Vision Sunday with we'll sign up for small group small groups will start after that for the first term of 2022 and we'll start our first series of the first term on the 30th of January. So those are the dates. I'm sure there will be graphics coming up as I'm speaking and there'll be a graphic to summarize those dates for you so that you know what's coming up. Well that leads us to the final notice on finances and that is to say thank you so much for your generosity. Uh, we have known an upswing in the last month, October, in our finances. We just came under 40,000, which was 10,000, uh, 9 or 10,000 better than the month before. And I'm hoping to go over the 40,000 mark in November. It will help us so much with all that we've got to put in place for December and getting ready for in-person in January. There's so much happening through the church. And I really want to encourage you to get your tithes and offerings in before the end of November so that we can have the biggest push we can for the new year. Thank you so much for your generosity and faithfulness and participation together in the gospel. I'll pray for the Gotos as they preach for us today. Father, thank you for the series, Leaders on the Frontline. Thank you for this special family. 
the amazing way that Simba is as a a husband and a father, what he is as a friend amongst us, and what he is as an influencer in the marketplace and far beyond. Thank you for each member of the Goto family, for the creativity that each one brings and the example that they are, the inspiration that they are to us. We pray for your blessing upon them as they bring your word to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. I am Simbarashe Goto, married to my wonderful wife, Tabonga. We've been married for the last 18 years, father to two beautiful daughters, Hannah and Kirsten. Uh, if you can allow me just to paint a little picture of who I am. Uh, when I'm away from, from work, I spend quite a bit of time uh, at home, given the time constraints, given I would have been away from work for such a long time. In terms of hobbies, I love uh, to play a bit of golf. Admittedly, I'm a very average golfer, but a round or two won't hurt. I'm also a serious sports fanatic, ardent uh, Arsenal supporter, All Blacks supporter, and F1, um, a full Lewis Hamilton supporter. Uh, Tawonga, what can you tell uh, everyone about yourself? I'm Tawonga, full-time mom, wife, counselling student and actively involved in Christian education in Zimbabwe. I enjoy hand embroidery and crochet. Hi, I'm Hannah. I'm 16. I'm a student. I love music, playing my instruments, which are piano and guitar. I love drama, debate. And I think I am a good swimmer. I'm Kirsten Goto. I'm in grade six. I'm ten, turning eleven tomorrow. I enjoy dancing and baking. Today's key verse is Colossians three, verse twenty-three: "Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord and not for man." Today, we're going to be talking about whatever you do. Thanks, Kirsten. This scripture, Colossians three, verse twenty-three was Kirsten's memory verse uh, from school a couple of weeks ago. When we're thinking of what to share, um, this particular verse uh, resonated with all of us. It is quite simple to understand. Whatever you do, do it with all your heart and as working for the Lord and not to man. And yet, though simple, there's quite a lot that we can unpack from it. It is our sincere hope and prayer that the Lord would help us uh, all think through what we do and how we can do it for the glory of God. Arthur Ashe, a former American professional uh, tennis player said, start where you are, use what you have and do what you can. So this is mes a message for all of us at church. We all have a whatever that we do. As I've already indicated earlier on, I'm a, main, I'm a minor by profession, so I'll talk about whatever you do, make sure your work counts. You can do this by three points. I'll start off by viewing your work as God's calling. Secondly, knowing who your real boss is. And thirdly, uh, knowing how your work matters. I'll briefly expand on the three points. Viewing your work as God's calling. In Genesis 2 verse 15, uh, it says, the Lord, the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work and take care of it. This was before the fall, before sin entered the world, even before the creation of Eve. God created us to work. And so when we are blessed to have a job or vacation, vocation, I need to highlight here given that the majority of Zimbabweans are in, informal, in the informal sector. That includes you too. You are also expected to work 
as unto the Lord, because it is a ministry. Dorothy Sayers, uh, an English writer, wrote, All work done well, and for God's glory is Christian work. So, church, all work is ministry. It's not only the work that we do on a Sunday morning or Sunday evening uh, with the youth, but all work is ministry. The second point is know who your real boss is. This is where the second part of Colossians 3.23 comes in, as is working for the Lord, not for man. You may have an absolutely brilliant boss, or you may not have such a great boss. And amongst us, some of us here are busy saying, well, you need to work with my boss just for one day, and you'll be able to understand why I'm not as committed or I do not have the intensity. But the reality is, your boss, your humanly boss, is not the real boss. So once we understand who our real boss is, it should change and spur us into us working for the real boss who is the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, with so much technology now and a lot of cameras everywhere that monitor uh, employee activity, what we should actually be saying is when your own humanly boss is away and when they're present, the intensity and the commitment to work should be exactly the same because your real boss is always watching. Your real boss is the Lord Jesus. The third point is how you work matters. You may be sitting there listening to me and you're saying, well, I hate my work. This is not what I trained for. I'll only start applying myself once I'm in the proper position. Reality though is uh, God would want us to be faithful with where we are at the moment. And in, oftentimes what happens if you are faithful with the current position, uh, those doors end up uh, opening anyway. I've got uh, an example that to this day stuck to me uh, that happened some 23 years back in an open, mine, open pit mine in Guruve. There was uh, an employee who now turns out to actually be a colleague who started off at the bottom of the food chain as a stone picker. But literally, his job from eight to five would be to pick up stones that fell on the road so that we would be able to save uh, the uh, cost on the tires in case they got cut by those same stones. He would get to work on time. When he was at, uh, at work, he would perform his tasks on time once you did that, you would also then follow the right procedures and everything to standards. Similar principles to what you would get in foundations for farming. He certainly reaped his just rewards because after he had done that for a period of time, he then got promoted and he carried those particular characteristics and work ethic to the next, next uh, positions that he was promoted to. I would say he was promoted five times in, in two years. But for me, perhaps, that what is more telling is everybody around him would see that he was different. And for me, that is the big issue. We've got to be able to be seen to be different because we're not working for ourselves, but we're working unto the Lord. So yes, you may be able to get the earthly promotions, but what you ideally would want is because you've done so well, people turn around and say, what is so different about you? And therefore, you are a witness and a testimony of what it is to work for the Lord. Tawonga, what would you say about whatever you do? Thank you. I would say, whatever you do, serve others. Last week, we heard an impassioned plea to love Jesus and love others. And serving others is a key part of that calling. In Luke 10, verse 30 to 37, we read about the parable of the Good Samaritan. From it, we can draw two lessons, that we cannot serve with religious hearts and we need hearts of compassion. In verse 31 to 32, we see that both the priest and the Levite walked past the injured man and went about their way. They represent empty religion because they were of no practical help. We could say of ourselves that we help others as much as we can, so we don't practice empty religion. But God sees our hearts and he tests our motives. 
If we practice false piety, where our philanthropy and service of others is purely driven by a selfish motive of heavenly reward, or worse still, self-righteousness, then it is useless. In Matthew 7, verse 21, Jesus was telling the crowd that it's not all who say, Lord, Lord, who will enter the kingdom of heaven. We cannot serve with religious hearts. It is useless because Christ does not recognize it. What we need is hearts of compassion. The first step is to be aware of the needs that are around us. In Luke 10, all three men clearly could see the needs of the injured man. So whilst it's a great first step, just knowing the needs alone is not enough. We need compassion. Compassion is therefore the willingness to then help. Compassion does not look at whether that person deserves our help or not. Often we hear people analyzing how the need could have been avoided. The three men could have asked why he was traveling, the, why the injured man was traveling by himself without with valuable goods. But James 2 verse 15 to 16 shows us that that's besides the point. In a nutshell it says, anyone then who knowing the good they ought to do and does not do it, sins. Compassion is an act of will and a decision to serve regardless of how you feel about the other person. Jews and Samaritans were not friends. The good Samaritan would have been justified to walk away, but he didn't. He saw the need and he helped. It's about us listening to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. So we need hearts of compassion to serve. It is my prayer that as we go about life from this week going forward, whenever we see a need, let us prayerfully seek help from God on how we need to respond and then willfully obey. Hannah, what is your perspective? Whatever you do, don't get caught. Now, that's a familiar thought that runs through all our heads. In the book of Joshua, after the victory of Jericho, Achan thought that by burying his loot under his tent, he would not be caught, but nothing is hidden from God. So instead, whatever you do, don't get caught in sin. It reminds me of how if anyone in my family gets caught lying or exaggerating, a verse is recited to them, which is 1 John 1 verse 9. I found myself having that verse recited to me a lot because I always have a colorful recollection of things. But God reminds us teenagers to never be caught in hidden sin like Akin. Whether it is in our conversations, spoken, or in our DMs, or it is when we're using the internet and when we're using our social medias, or when, it's in, when we're in our rooms hiding from our mom. My mom told me to say that last part. But seriously, whatever you do, don't make life-altering mistakes because of sin. If you're hiding it, it's probably not appropriate. However, not all is lost because 1 John 1 verse 9 says, if we confess our sins, God is just and he is faithful and he will forgive our sins and he will purify us from all unrighteousness. Kirsten, your thoughts? Whatever you do, be well prepared. Uh, I enjoyed the story from Rock Pets, the story about the ants and the grasshopper. So one day in spring, the grasshopper the ants are busy co collecting food and then they run into the grasshopper. The grasshopper is playing around eating food, swimming in the springs and the ants say, what are you doing? He says, enjoying the nice warm weather and the beautiful plants. He then asks the ants what they're doing. The ants say, we're collecting food and they're like, you should join us. He's like, there's three more months to go, I'm fine. I'll join you in one of those months. Three months later, it's winter, and he didn't collect any food. Long story short, he had a very hard winter. He was cold, he had nothing to eat. Every spring, summer, and autumn after that, he was collecting food day and a little bit of the night. And he learned his lesson. So don't be like the grasshopper, and always be well prepared. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Have a good Sunday! Bye! Bye.